It's Tuesday, May 14. Here's what's making news today. The Ministry of the Presidency today announced that former Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich has been appointed Foreign Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with responsibility for the Department of Frontiers and Territorial Integrity and the Department of Trade and Economic Cooperation. Dominic Gaskin, former Minister of Business, has been appointed Director of Manufacturing and Marketing within the Ministry of Business with responsibility for the enforcement of standards, providing assistance to small producers and access to markets, particularly Eastern Caribbean markets. Also, former Minister of Public Service Dr. Rupert Rupnerine has been appointed Director of Public Service Training within the Ministry of the Presidency with responsibility for training standards at the Bertram Collins College of the Public Service, Guyana Defense Force Staff College and Guyana Police Force Staff College. More on this story can be found on our website and social media platforms. The United Nations agencies are officially under one roof with the opening of the UN House on Monday. We are now part of a, um, a very ambitious UN development system reform that acknowledges the need for the UN agencies, the UN system, to really work together and tackle um, issues that are complex and integrated in nature to help the countries that we serve and the people that we serve. The timing of this UN House um, is absolutely opportune. United Nations Resident Representative to Guyana, Makiko Tanaka. According to Tanaka, the establishment of UN House seeks to achieve a greater economy of scale, effectively utilize shared resources, build closer ties among UN staff, improve collaboration, and promote a unified UN image. After having found the building, we had to then therefore have to do negotiations, and thankfully that was concluded last year, and we signed a 10-year lease. We do hope that this year will be the uh, bedrock of the UN activities in the country from now on. Minister of Public Infrastructure, David Patterson. The Finance Minister highlighted the significant role the building will play. This relocation, will result in reduced transaction costs for Guyana and low overheads for the UN system. Importantly, however, is the fact that the UN country team will be in a better position to implement more coherent programs and deliver them at least costs. USAID has been the first agency to occupy the building, with other agencies slated to relocate within the coming months. United Nations officially has a new home in Guyana. Reported from UN House with videographer Kareem Peters, Shaquille Bourne, for InfoHub. Public Security Minister Kemrad Ramjitan donated much-needed sport gear to the Bell West Primary School as the government continues to improve sport development across the country. The donation of the sport equipment was in keeping with a promise made by the minister following the Region 3 Government Comes to You outreach held on April 28, 2019. It is important that we support these um, rural schools that might be hard-pressed because some of the best cricketers that Guyana ever produced came from the rural areas. Headmistress of Bell West Primary, Parvati Ali, said the students are excited and grateful for the equipment, which will help to boost sport performance in the school. Sports is an integral part of our curriculum. And as such, without the gears, you cannot have it being done effectively. So we have a ground, we have our gear, so the children will be there practicing and so we can take part in any competition. Two students expressed their relation for the sport gear. Sports is the second thing in my life, you know. So I enjoy sports and I really enjoy it. Well, I will get to experience how it, it is played. Like, I watch it on television, but now I get in the feel of how it's played. The school, which accommodates 399 people, sits on the West Bank of Demerara and is slated to receive additional sport infrastructure. Natisha Isaacs for InfoHub. President David Granger will be delivering the feature address at a formal opening of the Center of Excellence in Information Technology, CEIT. The event will be held at the CEIT building, University of Guyana, Turkine campus, at 11 hours on Wednesday. The CEIT is a joint initiative between the Government of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and the Government of India. 
The center falls under the aegis of the National Data Management Authority, NDMA, within the Ministry of Public Telecommunications. It was created to provide training for public sector professionals in keeping with one of the NDMA's statutory objectives, which is to promote the development of training and manpower programs in order to ensure that adequately trained personnel are available for the efficient operation of ICT systems. The Minister of Public Telecommunications, Catherine Hughes, along with other ministers, will also be in attendance. Still to come, development of grassroots football main focus of FIFA conference and consultations on Amerindian Act 2006 continue. Details of these and more after the break. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America? where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape. From the wetlands and savannas to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways and lush and rich in rainforest would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet including many of the world's giant species. This untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Guyana. of Social Cohesion with Responsibility for Culture, Youth and Sport, Dr. George Norton today applauded the hosting of the FIFA Development Conference, which has as its primary focus the expansion of grassroots football. At the two-day conference being held at the Marriott Hotel, Minister Norton said that over the years, Guyana astonished the world in the area of sports. With that, he said the government has taken the approach to build the capacity of its young athletes. He said FIFA's decision to host such a conference in Guyana signals its confidence in the land of many waters. Your decision to focus this conference on the implementation of a comprehensive regional school football program is most timely and very much welcome. At the level of this administration, we appreciate these undertakings and we look forward to strengthening our partnership with FIFA on all its confederations for the betterment of football as a whole and as yet another means of bringing people together and promoting social cohesion. Minister Norton alluded to the efforts the government has been taking towards development of the sport. This is why we have embarked on upgrading and building new sport facilities including community and school grounds. Notwithstanding the construction of two new synthetic tracks slated for year-end completion, to be noted is the construction of the football playing facility in the inner space of these two tracks. Development Director of FIFA, Veron Mos Jengo Umbo, said the conference is essential to the future of football in Guyana. Similar sentiments were echoed by President of the Guyana Football Federation, Wayne Ford. Isaiah Brafitt for InfoHub. Calls have been issued for improved land rights for indigenous villages as the consultations on the 2006 Amerindian Act continued in the Maruka sub-district. Unless otherwise freely agreed upon by the village community, 51% at the general meeting, this is eligible to vote. Compensation shall take the form of lands, territories, and resource, resources equal in quality, size, and legal status, or of monetary compensation or other appropriate redress. This was Tushao Emanuel's submission for an addition to the Amerindian Act 2006. Currently, the Act allows for the government to grant permission for large-scale mining if a village refuses. Compensation should be done by the state to give back to the indigenous community 
the same amount of land from state land. Concerns were not only raised for compensation for lands lost, but also for something to be done about the leasing of village lands. We have land in our, within our reservation that was issued even before the formation of the Amerindian Act in 1976 and again in 2006. They were land already been leased to um, organizations, right, even before the Amerindian Act was there. And they are still there because I noticed that they are still effective, they are still carrying out their, their concern for those lands. Councillor Henry said this poses a challenge for the village councils as these lands are within the reservation. Meanwhile, the resounding call for the name of the act to be changed to the Indigenous Peoples Act requires that the word Amerindian throughout the act is changed to Indigenous people. Reporting for InfoHub, Nikosi Bruce. Young males of the Open Door Center are benefiting from a course in barbering through Kevin's Reflections. The program is being funded by the Ministry of Public Health. Three young men from the Open Door Center began their training in barbering at Kevin's Reflection on Monday. The training, which is fully funded by the Ministry of Public Health, is expected to run for 10 weeks. Peter Fraser and Anthony Canterbury, who were two out of the three students selected for the training, arrived ready and anxious to embark on this new journey. It's pretty much an honor to learn barbering because there's actually a lot of people that don't get the chance to actually do it when they actually have a dream of becoming a barber or even to actually learn a trade that can better themselves in the future. It pretty much is a great honor for me actually to actually be able to do that. Kevin John, a barber for 28 years, the owner of Kevin's Reflections, believes that the skill could be easily acquired by the students. I am very, very happy and intrigued to be a part of changing anyone's lives. I know what we are giving. It's life changing. For you to become um, a professional barber, I believe that is life changing. And we work from, with different folks from across the country who are differently able. And so we are still able to, to make, bring about some form of change in, in the lives of, of those persons. So I'm, I'm excited. This initiative was provided as an option for the students who had interest in pursuing a career in the field. After completing this program, these students will receive a certificate from Kevin's Reflection. For InfoHub, Ali Hamilton. That's all for this evening. Connect with us on WhatsApp, like and subscribe to our Facebook page for notifications, and subscribe to our website for more stories. You can also follow us on Instagram for updates. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye.